Hey, this is CND Channel. I'm Chris. This is MMA for You. I'm going to be doing my prediction for UFC on Fox 16, uh, Dillashaw versus Burrell 2, which happens on July 25th. Overall, I actually like the card. Um, main card wise, is really good. Kind of drops off on the prelims. I mean, just because there aren't any like blue chip prospects, but there are some names here Jim Miller. You know, Danny Casillo even. Just guys you might be familiar with. Eddie Wineland, Brian Caraway, Even Crookshank versus Kraus. That's good. Ramsey Nedjem. Jessman Duke. So, it's a good card. Um, not. It's actually not too heavy on prospects. I'd only... I'd say, what, Barboza, Felder, and a couple others really are, are the prospects of the card. But you definitely have a lot of recognizable names. Lozon, Gomi also. Of course, the title fight, co the main event, and co-main. Let's get started. Uh, TJ Dillashaw fights Henan Barrao Pagato. I'll just call him Henan Barrao because that's what everyone calls him now. Uh, Henan Barrao, 33-2 and two record with one no contest. 8 wins by K or Tico, 15 wins by Sub, 28 years old, training out of Nova Uniao. He is a former UFC bantamweight champion. He lost it to TJ Dillashaw. He got knocked out by him. At his best, he has strong Muay Thai with really good knees. Uh, he is a legit Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt with a uh, really good arm triangle, for example. Uh, he's just really good on the ground, too, in general. Good back takes as well. Takedown defense. It, it, the guy's like impenetrable. He is so hard to take down and keep down. His offensive takedown ability is actually pretty good. One of the problems with Burrell is that he has trouble making weight, and um, he's a bit hittable, and I don't think he reacts super well to getting hit. TJ Dillashaw, 11-2 record, 5 wins by K.R. Tico, 3 wins by Sub, 29 years old on a 3-fight win streak, training out of Team Alpha Male. He is the current UFC bantamweight champion, and he defeated Burrell by Tico back in May of 2014. Uh, he's a strong wrestler with really good ground and pound. He's a strong scrambler, too. Um, Stand-up's really good. He has a Dominic Cruz-style fighting. He uses a lot of movement. He uses a lot of combinations. Despite getting the knockdown in the first round against Burrell, I, I wouldn't call TJ Dillashaw like heavy-handed. I mean... It, it took five rounds, really, to put, like, Burrell away. And uh, Joe Soto, another guy, to put away. Uh, it took him five rounds. He, he's not, like, a one-punch knockout type guy. Um, he could drop you, for sure. Don't get me wrong. It's not like he's pillow-fisted. Um, but, yeah. This one's interesting, just because... Um, Burrell, he fought a um, Canadian guy. Super underrated Canadian fighter. His name escapes me at the moment. Um, wow. I totally forgot the guy's name. Totally underrated guy, though. Uh, Canadian fighter. Um... And he was actually managing to tag Burrell, but Burrell managed to get that arm triangle in the third round. Gosh, I, I, I can't believe I forgot his name. <laughs> um, and TJ Dillashaw's last fight against Joe Soto. One thing about Burrell, he is pretty flat-footed, where I was like, Dillashaw has more fleet of foot style. Um, I actually see this fight probably being more competitive than the first one. I don't see it as a... I'd be surprised, actually, if this is a repeat of the first one. Um, i got to go Dillashaw to win this one. He's more of a combination striker. He uses a lot more movement, whereas Burrell is a little more flat-footed. Burrell's kind of shown to be a bit hittable. Um, that's not to say that Burrell can't catch Dillashaw, because he most certainly can. Um... And Burrell's shown to be a bit more of a heavy-handed striker. Uh, but I'm going to go TJ Dillashaw. Like I said, I think it'll be a more competitive fight this time around. So I'm going to go by decision. 
Um, I think he can wear down Burrell, but I'd imagine that they'd have a better game plan. The new Nobunia yeah, would have a better game plan against Dillashaw. Possibly even utilizing leg kicks uh, in this fight to disrupt the movement from Dillashaw. But ultimately, you know, Dillashaw can also mix into takedowns. Um, you know, Burrell has really good takedown defense. Like I said, I just I like the movement based style of Dillashaw to beat the flat footed style of Burrell. TJ Dillashaw by decision. Um, like I said, I think it's going to be a lot more competitive than the first time around, though. I, I really do. Next fight after that, Jessica Evil Eye fights Misha Cupcake Tate. Tate has a 16 and 5 record, 3 wins by KO Tico, 6 wins by Sub. She also has two losses by KO Tico and two losses by Sub. 28 years old on a three fight win streak, training out of Extreme Couture. She is a former Strike Force, Strike Force women's bantamweight champion with good wrestling, strong Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills. She's getting into scramble as well. Her stand up is actually improving. She's still very hittable, but her punching technique actually looks a lot better than it's used to. One thing about uh, Tate also, she's really tough and gritty. It takes a lot to really put her away. Uh, Jessica I, 11-2 record with one no contest. Three wins by Kertika, one win by Sub. 28 years old, training out of strong style fight team. Stipe Miocic trains out of there. Uh, at her best, she's a good boxer. She uses combinations as well. She's actually pretty good in a clinch too. I really, remember she... I actually recall she actually had some pretty good clinch striking as well. Um, her takedown defense is improving, but it's not like impenetrable by any means. Um, Tate is someone I grossly underestimate. It's her heart and like ability to win, which is like she know she finds ways to win. Sometimes overcome any technical deficiencies uh, that she has, like against Sir McMahon. You know, I mean, she got this happens a lot too with with, with Tate. Actually, it happened against Julie Kedzie. Gets beat up on the feet, really bad, even dropped. Still manages to come back and get the win. Um, that's yeah, that's the thing with Tate. Meant you know. The problem is, too, with, with Tate is her fight IQs. Like, she fought Carmouche one time. I, there's a lot of fights where she'll, like, she'll strike when she should be wrestling, like, against Kedzie. And then, and she ended up winning on the ground by armbar. <laughs> and then she'll, you know, yeah, you know, she'll just, like, strike when she should be wrestling or vice versa. And, like, even when she fought Carmouche, she won, but it's really close. And it's like, why are you striking with her? You're letting Carmouche get the takedown first. It was just one of those things. Uh, then she gets, like, dropped by Sarah McMahon in the first round. Manages to come back, outscramble her at times. Um, stayed in top control in the third round for a long period of time. Jessica, I though, she's good. I think she can beat Misha Tate up on the feet. That's the thing. Um... However, I think that Misha Tate will be able to take I down. This one's hard for me to call, actually. Because um, I think she'll be able to take her down. I just don't know if she can do it with consistency. Um, and if she can even hold her down. I remember uh, Alexis Davis. She's not even, like, the great... You know, I think Tate's a better wrestler than Alexis Davis. But Alexis Davis managed to take I down. So, um, I think Tate can. Um, I am going to go with Misha Tate by decision. Uh, there's a lot to... There's always X factors with Tate, though. Good and bad fight IQ. Toughness, you know, on the bad, it's fight IQ. Toughness on, like, the good. You know what I mean? Um, I think I is the better striker. And she could just sprawl and brawl her way to victory. But ultimately, I think Misha Tate can uh, get her to the ground, keep her there, and, and do it often enough to get to get the victory. Next round, that Edson Barboza fights Paul Felder. Barboza, fifteen and three record, ten wins by KO Tico, one win by Sub. Twenty nine years old, training out of Ricardo Almeida Jiu Jitsu with the likes of Frankie Edgar and Marlon Moraes. 
The name of uh, Barbosa, his uh, biggest strength are his kicks, especially his leg kicks, but he can also do damage to the body as well, and he can get the head kick as well too. His kicks are devastating. So almost kickboxing is good. He is pretty heavy handed. Defensively, he could probably use some work. Uh, his takedown fence is really good. Barboza is hard to take down and he's hard to keep down. So while grappling is improving, he'll go for his own offensive takedown every once in a while. Still got to question Barboza's chin though. You know? Uh, not just like Varner, but like Danny Castillo dropped him. Um... Uh, Sorny dropped him with the jab, you know. It's it just one of those things. I mean, he did really well against Michael Johnson. I don't, I don't believe that Barboza actually got dropped by Johnson. So that actually says something about Barboza there. Paul Felder, ten and zero, undefeated record, seven wins by KO, Tico, three wins by decision. Thirty years old, training out of Henzo Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Uh, he is. Big for 155, just strong Muay Thai, but they also go for spinning strikes as shown in the Danny Castillo fight. His knees are really strong too. Um, I really like that he was using his knees similar to how Donald Cerrone uses them because I think they've trained together too. Uh, he uses that as a way to defend takedowns. Really heavy handed and Fowler's takedown defense is solid. You can even watch the Jason Sago fight. Sago just has a really hard time trying to take him down. Um, Felder, man, dark horse. I think people are coming around to him after that win over Castillo. Um, it's tough to say really how good he is at this point. Skill set wise, he looks really good. I, I gotta admit, his stand up's good, his takedown defense is good, he's big from 155. Um, I still haven't really truly seen him in danger. Uh, I don't know how he reacts to that. So there's still certain things about his game that I don't know. Um, and there's a lot to like about Barboza's game. You know, if he can really get his kicking game on Felder, that'd be really interesting. I don't think that's, you know, I think he'll get some kicks in. I think Felder's going to aggressively push forward, though, uh, and, and try and get his own strikes in. Um, and like I said, I still question Barboza's chin. I think it's Felder's time, man. I really do. I'm pretty high on him as, as a prospect. Um, really, really impressed me in that Castillo fight. Not just getting that spinning back fist, you know, def you know, using the knees and whatnot. And, and just his overall game looked really solid. I'm going to go Paul Felder by knockout. I, I just... Um, something about his game, you know, I just like his game. It, it's... I think his size, he might be able to push forward on Barboza. Barboza has shown some susceptibility to getting pressured. Um, obviously, Barboza's kicking game, especially, is devastating. You know, so you can de you know Barboza's always one kick away from winning the f turning the fight around and or just winning the fight. But I, I like Father's game. Stand up's good. Um, Pushes forward, good knees, big for the weight class. Paul Felder by KO or TKO. Next fight after that, Takanori Gomi fights Joe Lozon. Gomi, 35 and 10 record with one no contest, 13 wins by KO or TKO, 6 wins by sub. That's a 6 losses by submission, 36 years old. He is a brawler, but he's really aggressive, always pushing forward. His grappling is decent, but not great. Um. Uh, his cardio has shown to be pretty weak, especially as of late. I don't know how hard he trains, to be perfectly honest with you. Joe Lowe's on 24 and 10 record, 5 wins by KO Tico, 18 wins by sub. That's his 4 losses by KO Tico, 3 losses by submission, 31 years old. He has a really aggressive Brazilian Jiu Jitsu game. He is. I mean, he'll pass guard and whatnot, but he is quite the submit. He is always hunting for that submission. So wrestling's actually pretty good. You know, he has good offensive takedowns. Uh, takedown defense, just gonna, eh, because he likes to fight off his back. Uh, he's really confident just on the ground to scramble and whatnot. Stand up's average, but it, it's definitely not, it's not a liability. He will go after his opponent. Sometimes he'll get hit a lot. 
but uh, he'll, he'll definitely go after his opponent. You can watch like that Michael Chiesa fight, for example. He's just they're just going after each other, you know. It's always had to fight. Real resilient guy, always pushing forward. Um, I think Gomi has just been on the. I mean, I think it's safe to say actually that Gomi's been on on a steep decline at this point. Um. I mean, unless Gomi gets like that perfect punch, I can see Lozon taking them down and getting that sub. Even in the stand up, I think Lozon can do very well. He just gotta watch out for those power strikes, which is like every strike that Gomi throws. Otherwise, I think he does well enough in the stand up. I think he'll eventually be able to get the fight to the ground and use his superior Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to get the submission win. So, Joe Lozon by submission. Okay, on to the prelims, which is also on Fox. Uh, Tom Lawler fights John Volante. Um, Tom Lawler, six, uh, nine and five record with one no contest. Three wins by K.O. Tico, four wins by sub. Plus has two losses by submission. 32 years old. He's going to be a shorter fighter at six foot. He's trading wins and losses. I believe he, what, Michael Kuyper in his last fight. Uh, and I want to say this fight's going to be at 205. So Lawler's fine at 185. I think he's moving back up to 205 for this. Lawler, he last fought in April of 2013 against Michael Kuyper. He's a good wrestler. His stand-up's actually pretty good, too. It's like average. It's not great, but it's not bad. John Volante, 13-5 record. Eight wins by K.R. Tico, two wins by Sub. That's just two losses by K.R. Tico, 30 years old, and he's 6'2". He's on a two-fight win streak. Um, he beat... Uh, got the guy's name. I remember his nickname. He beat Beaston 25-8 in his last fight. Knocked him out. Um, gosh, I, there's so many fighters in the UFC. I used to remember all their names. Now it's like... You know, there, there's just so many. I can't remember uh, the names. Sometimes I'll remember a nickname or something. But anyways, uh, John Volante training out of Belmore Kickboxing. And he also trains, of course, Weidman, too. Uh, Stand-up solid. He's actually shown to be pretty heavy-handed. And in his last fight, he showed a good leg kick game, actually. He's a good wrestler, both offensively and defensively. If I'm with Volante, though, his cardio is pretty weak. Um, you know, I gotta go John Volante here, though. I think he could probably... I don't know if I, on a technical level he can outstrike him, but I know he'll be the bigger guy. He's also the guy that has, you know, has consistently fought for us. Lawler hasn't fought in two years, which could be good, could be bad. Uh, but you know, Ring Ross does exist. I feel it does with, with some. Um, wrestling wise, I think Volante should be able to defend enough takedowns. Uh from Lawler so yeah I, and I think Volante has the advantage on the feet um don't to say if I'll get a KR Tico I'll go John Volante by decision here next right after that Danny Castillo fights Jim Miller Jim Miller 24 and 6 record with one no contest 3 wins by KR Tico 14 wins by sub at 31 years old on a 2 fight losing streak Really well-rounded guy. His stand-up's good. His offensive takedown ability is not too bad. He is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Um, with the Miller brothers, are real tough and gritty guys. Uh, biggest problem with Jim Miller, and watch this in a lot of his fights, his takedown defense is not very good. He gets taken down a lot um, and often in his fights. One of his other problems, too... And it's hurt him in fights like against like Benson Henderson, for example. I is that Jim Miller can be way too content off of his back. I think that's one of his biggest problems is that like he gets put on his back and he wants to play jujitsu. He's gonna look for subs or sweeps off his back, but he won't always get them, and so he can be controlled and or ground and pounded by his opponent. 
Danny Castillo, 17 and 8 record. Six wins by K.R. Tico, four wins by Sub. That's his three losses by K.R. Tico and two losses by Sub. 35 years old, also on a two fight losing streak, training out of Team Apple Mail. So, only won one of his last four fights. It's against Brenneman. He's a good wrestler with good top control and a stand up. I'd say it's average. It's not bad, but it's not great either. This one's hard for me to call just because if Danny Castillo just works a wrestling and top control fight, I think he can win. One other thing about Jim Miller is while he does have good stand-up um, and some power, he's not pillow-fisted by any stretch. He does have some power in his strikes. Um, he's not like those heavy hitters that have like, man, it's a knockout or knockdown like Castillo. Um... And like I said, I don't like Jim Miller's takedown defense. It, it just he's been taken down by a good amount of his opposition. Um, I know ranking wise, Jim Miller and Jim Miller's well, they fought they both fought some pretty high level competition. Uh, this one's tough because this is really a fight to see, hey, is Jim Miller still that top ten or gatekeeper top ten? Or does he lose to like a mid level guy like Danny Castillo? Stylistically, I just don't like this fight. I go by going by like a skill set analysis. If this is on this is based on the if Castillo utilizes a grappling and wrestling heavy uh, strategy, I think he wins. If not, I think Jim Miller can wear him out on the feet um, and just kind of outwork him on, on the feet. Maybe get some opportunistic uh, uh, subs in there. Maybe get a knockdown. I'm uh, going to go against the green. I'm going to go Danny Castillo. I just, like I said, I, I think, I keep saying it. <laughs> I'll say it one more time. Castillo, he can wrestle, and he does have legitimately good top control. This is a guy that managed to hold Tony Ferguson down for long stretches of the fight and even mount him. And with Jim Miller's takedown defense, I'm not too impressed with. And the fact that he can be just a little too content off his back. I'm going to go Danny Castillo by decision. Next fight after that, Kenny Robertson fights Ben Saunders. Saunders, 18-6 and six record with two draws. Nine wins by K.O. Tico, six wins by Sub. That says three losses by K.O. Tico, 32 years old. And he's uh, pretty tall for the weight class at 6'3", and he's on a two-fight win streak, training out of ATT Orlando. He has strong Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills. He's strong off his back. He uses the rubber guard really well. Probably one of the best fighters to use rubber guard in MMA. Like, I just don't see that many good rubber guard players in MMA. Smutai's good. He has some really strong knees. But the problem with uh, Saunders is he does have weak takedown defense. And he can be far too content off of his back. Kenny Robertson, 15-3 and three record. Four wins by K.O. Tico, nine wins by Sub. 31 years old. He's going to be a shorter fighter at 5'10". He's on a three-fight win streak. He's a good wrestling with good ground and pound. His striking is pretty sloppy, but it's effective. I mean, knocked out Sultan Aleyev in his last fight. And he just kind of goes for it. He's really resilient and he pushes forward. Kenny Robertson, like Mike Pierce, like Ryan LaFleur, like Court McGee, like um, George Sullivan, are these like real workmen-like fighters. I mean, you can, you can just see it too. The way they fight, it's just absolute workmen-like performances. You know, they're not great wrestlers, great strikers. But they're always on their opponent. They're super game, super resilient, tough to put away. Um, and they're perfect gatekeeper types. They, they're just perfect gatekeeper types. This one's kind of tough for me to call, but I'm leaning towards Kenny Robertson here. I think he can take the... He is a wrestler. I think he can take the fight to the ground. He actually has some pretty creative subs. You have to remember against what Brock Dardeen, I think. He got that crazy leg lock. But he can take opponents down and keep them down. He managed to do it against Ildemar Alcantara, too, if I'm not mistaken. He even took down Sultan Aleyev. 
I think Ben Saunders is better on the feet on a technical level, especially if he can get those knees going. I mean, he's going to be the taller fighter. So Robertson's got to like really watch out there because he's going to be the shorter fighter. And if he goes for takedowns, he might eat some knees in the process. So, But the thing is, once Robertson gets a fight to the ground, I feel like Saunders is just far too content off his back. And I feel his takedown defense is just far too weak. That I think a guy like Robertson can't take him down. Remember, like, um, in Bellator, even, like, Brian Baker was able to take him down with consistency, avoid getting subbed. I mean, there was a deep triangle that he had, he, that he was in. And he just worked top control and got the win on Saunders. I, I can see, you know, I don't see his takedown defense. Imp I haven't seen much improved takedown defense from Ben Saunders, so. Yeah, I'll go Kenny Robertson. I think he does a workmanlike performance by decision. Next round of that, Brian Carey fights Eddie Wineland. Brian Carey, 19-7 and record. One win by Tico, 17 wins by Sub. That's his two losses by submission. 30 years old, training out of... Uh, says he trains out of Team Alpha Male, but I thought he's with Extreme Couture now. So, don't really know where he's training at the moment. Uh, he's a good wrestler. Um... His strongest takedowns, though, if he gets you off against a cage, Caraway is great at t finishing takedowns against a cage. That's like one of the best things about him. He's got some strong Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He's really strong when he takes the back. Stand up, though, is just average at best. And he does have a good chin, um, which has saved him a good amount of times. <laughs> Eddie Wineland, 21 and 10 record with one draw. 11 wins by K.O. Tico, 5 wins by Sub. He also has 3 losses by K.O. Tico and 4 losses by Sub. 31 years old, training out of Doonland Valley Tudo with the likes of uh, Darren Elkins and Josh Shockley, if I'm not mistaken. He last fought Johnny Eduardo back in May 2014. He's a strong boxer, he uses combinations, and he has some strong takedown defense. Probably because he, he also fights with a hands-down style, which helps with his takedown defense. Carroll is not Johnny Eduardo. You know, I can't really see him beat up Eddie Wineland on the feet. And I think Wineland has good enough takedown defense to defend those takedowns. Gotta wonder about the layoff, though. But otherwise, I am going to go with Eddie Wineland. Carroll is pretty tough, though. So I'm going to actually... It's either K or Tico or Decision. But I just think that Eddie Wineland will be able to t stay in the center of the cage, for one thing. He's going to go hands down, box with Caraway. He doesn't even throw a lot of kicks anyways. And then be able to defend takedowns when necessary. That's how I see the fight going. Um, but if Caraway can really get it to the ground and get a dominant position, Eddie Wineland is in trouble. Nonetheless, Eddie Wineland by decision. Next right after that, Darren Cruikshank fights James Krause. Darren Cruikshank, 16-6 and six record with one no contest. Nine wins by KRTK, one win by sub. That's has three losses by submission, 30 years old. He's going to be the shorter fighter at 5'8", training out of Michigan top team. I want to say, I think we're on the Marcos trains there these days. And uh, some... So like Jason Butcher, I think, trains there too from Bellator. He's only won one of his last four fights. He does have a Taekwondo style stand up with really strong kicks. He can be very unorthodox. So wrestling's improving. Actually, he's been showing more of just a takedown game than anything else. Uh, he's not great off his back though. And he does, sh he has shown a weakness to getting pressured. Uh. A lot of guys just pressure him and take his kicking game away from him. And you see him back up against the cage a good amount of times because of that. James Krause, 21 and 7 record, 6 wins by KRT, 13 wins by sub. Haas has 2 losses by submission, 29 years old. He's going to be the much taller fighter at 6 2. He's on a 2 fight losing streak, training out of Glory MMA and Fitness with uh, Zach Cummings. He's only won one of his last four. Stand up's actually pretty good. Um. A lot of the guys have managed to outstrike him. Like, I think he lost to Lazaro, who managers out jab him. And then he lost to, like, Jorge Masvidal uh, as well. He's a really good boxer, though. 
Um, I also like James Krause's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's a really good guillotine, for one thing. That's just a really good, um, as far as stand-up goes, James Krause has a really good head kick as well. This one's tough for me to call because both these guys are like... This is almost like a loser leave town, leaves town fight. Um, I see avenues for both guys winning. I'm not I, I'm not thrilled with what I'm seeing out of Crackshank these days. Um, a lot of guy like I I've been seeing less of his stand up and more. He's trying to like it seems like he's trying to grapple a little more. He did it against like Njokawani for example. This isn't the worst thing to do. I don't think it's good against a guy like James Krause. Has, he's a pretty good grappler. Um, I'm going to go James Krause. He's the taller fighter. Um, I don't know if he can match Darren Cruikshank's stand-up. But I wonder if Cruikshank will have a hard time really getting inside of that reach. And then I like Krause's... Um, Grappling and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu game a lot better than Darren Cruikshank. I just, the, here's my problem. I can't imagine in my head how exactly the fight's gonna go. I kinda, I have an idea of what these guys bring to the table, except I can't really imagine the direction the fight's gonna take. Um, so, with that said, not super confident in the pick, but I'm going to go James Krause by submission. Next fight that, Andrew Holbrook fights Ramsey Nijem. So I did see one fight against uh, with Holbrook. He fought Ramiko Blackman. Holbrook has a 9-0 undefeated record with all 9 of his wins by submission. He's never been past the second round, and it's his first fight in the UFC. His Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills obviously are going to be really good. His wrestling's decent. When I saw him fight Blackman, I mean, he was, like, aiming for the body and even got some head kicks and whatnot. But on a technical level, I didn't think his stand-up was that good. I, th I actually found it a bit sloppy, just on a technical level. Same with Ramsey Nijem, though, who has a 9-5 and five record, 3 wins by K.O. Tico, 2 wins by Sub. That's just 3 losses by K.O. Tico and th 2 losses by Sub. 27 years old, training out of pit, elevated. The thing with Ninja is he thinks he's like Vanderlei Silva, but he just does not have the chin to like make that style work. And he got knocked out by Carlos Diego Ferreira in his last fight because of it. And he got knocked out by Miles Jerry in highlight real fashion. And he's gotten in drop too because of it. Real wild stand up. Gets countered a good amount of times. But at his strength, he's actually a really good wrestler. And has. A variety of takedowns, uh, trip takedowns. I remember uh, he fought what Justin Edwards. He went for some pretty cool trip takedowns, and then he can also go for the legs as well. His ground and pounds really good, and his over Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, game is good. His his problem is stand up defense and chin. It, they they just aren't very good. Nonetheless, I'm gonna go with Ramsey Nijem. I think he can just take the fight to the ground. Um, and just continue to ground and pound. Uh, so I'm going to go Ramsey Nijem by KO or TKO. Uh, I don't like that he's a blitzing type of fighter because he's gotten caught because of it. But um, it's worked for him. He actually beat Benil Daryush by blitzing him. <laughs> Uh, of all guys, too. And Vidardius is like a blue chip prospect who's really come up now. Um, but yeah, I'll go Ramsey Nedra by K or TK. I think you can get the fight to ground and really unleash some ground and pound. Next for that, Jessamine the Gun Duke fights Elizabeth Phillips. Duke, 3 and 2 record with 1 no contest. 1 win by TK, 1 win by sub. 29 years old. She's 5'11. It's on a two-fight losing streak, most recently losing to Leslie Smith by a body punch knockout. She last fought in July 2014. Her stand-up's actually pretty good. For her height, though, she doesn't use enough range-finding weapons. Um, her knees are really strong. I haven't seen them too much as of late. She also uses a push kick as well. Her grappling's improving. She will fight off her back. She'll throw up triangles and like arm bars when she's on her back. 
With Phillips, 4 and 3 record, 2 wins by KOTK, 1 win by Sub, 28 years old. She's going to be the shorter fighter at 5 6 on a two fight losing streak. Training out of Sikh Jitsu with Sam Cecilia, Juliana Pena, and Michael Chiesa. Um, I'd say Elizabeth Phillips' strength would probably be her wrestling. I remember when she fought like Latornu, for example, her stand up looked pretty sloppy. I mean, it's just not very technically sound and whatnot. A wrestling and grappling game is not too bad. Uh, I'm going to go Jessman Duke to win this one. Uh, I'll even go with the finish, you know? Uh, this is an opponent. I think it's an appropriate opponent for Duke. She She's lost to, like, just better. Like, here's the thing with Duke. When she was in the regional scene in Invicta, she was, like, beating up a lot of opposition in highlight real fashion. Or else getting like a Colt Armbar or something like that. And I think she was just pushed to the UFC far too soon. It's She didn't get enough seasoning on the regional scene and it showed. Thankfully, Elizabeth Phillips is like around that level though. You know, she's, I wouldn't necessarily call Elizabeth Phillips like a UFC caliber talent. Um... She has a possibility of winning by using her wrestling and grappling and whatnot. But uh, I like Duke's game here. I'll go Jessman Duke by submission. Um, even if she's off her back, I think she'll throw up subs. If she gets on top, I can see her landing ground pound, maybe try for a choke or something like that. Uh, should be interesting, though, because like Duke, I, I was so high on her when I heard she was going into the Ultimate Fighter, and... Unfortunately, she has greatly disappointed, but I think this is an opponent that's more on her level that she should be able to beat. Like, if they fought in the regional scene, for example, I'd fight Jasmine Duke, you know? It just ha so happens that this fight, the platform of this fight, is in the UFC. Jasmine Duke by submission. And finally, Zach Cummings fights Dominique non-stop action-packed steel. Dominic Steele, 13 and 5 record, three wins by Kertiko, three wins by Sub. He also has three losses by Kertiko. 27 years old on a two-fight win streak. Beat Chuck O'Neill in CES in the last fight. Actually, he's taking this fight on short notice. This is his first fight in the UFC. Um, I believe Dragon Neto was supposed to fight Zach Cummings originally. Sands is actually not too bad. His offensive takedown ability is all right. I. The one, I only watched one fight of his. I, I saw his fight against uh, Ryan Thomas in, in like 2013, 2014. Uh, he was getting taken down. His takedown defense didn't look that great. And he does a, he has a really just disjointed like game in general. It's like he's striking to clinch, but he's a pretty good strike. You know, striking didn't look too bad. But he like looks to clinch for some reason. And then also his takedown defense didn't look that good to me. Zach Cummings, 17 and 4 record, 4 wins by KOTK, 9 wins by Sub. Also, 2 losses by submission, 30 years old, training out of Glory MMA and Fitness. James Krause trains there. He's big for 170. Um, he has some strong Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills. Good uh, front headlock series. He's a good wrestler. Stand up's average. It's definitely good. It should be good enough here. I'm going to go with Zach Cummings by submission. I think that he can take the fight to the ground. And uh, get the sub. So yeah, Zach Cummings by submission. Okay, to recap on the main card: up T.J. Dillashaw over Henan Barral, Misha Tate over Jessica I, Paul Felder beating Edson Barboza, and Joe Lozon beating Takanori Gomi. On the prelims, I have John Vellante over Tom Lawler, Danny Castillo over Jim Miller, Kenny Robertson beating Ben Saunders, Eddie Wineland beating Brian Caraway. On a fight past prelims, I have James Cross over Dan Cruikshank, Ramsey Najem over Andrew Holbrook, Jasmine Duke beating Elizabeth Phillips, and Zach Cummings beating Dominic Steele. So that's it for my predictions for UFC on Fox 16, Dillashaw vs. Burrell 2. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And that's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.